What is going on, Charles Botenston here? We are gonna be talking about the third portion of getting into a co-op. So the first one was dead to income ratio. If you haven't read through that, click somewhere in this post or this video to go over and read about that or listen to that because that is one of the most important. Then you have credit, which I made two videos about. And then you have the third portion of that, which is how much money do you have left over once you buy the home? So in other words, it's known as PCL, post-closing liquidity. The bank looks at it. They look at debt to income ratio, which is around 42%. A co-op looks at it around 29% on the high end, 25% on the ideal end, and then 20% on the, oh, yes, you're the ideal candidate. Then you have post-closing liquidity. So this is the way to think about it. First of all, we have a calculator on our website. Highly recommend you go over and check that out. But essentially the calculator will give you how many months of post-closing do you have? So the, the way that they think about it is you have 20% down or 25% down or 30% down, whatever the building requires. Obviously if it's a condo and you're fine, and this is all about financing, even if it's cash, you still need post-closing liquidity. We're going through a cash deal right now that it's, they don't have a lot, but it's enough for two years. So in other words, let's talk about financing first. So when you're financing, the bank is gonna require 20% down unless you get a special FHA or you get just a, another product that the bank offers. So we're just gonna talk about 20% right now. You put down 20%. If it's a condo co-op, it depends on the closing cost. Afterwards, if you're financing above below a million dollars, above below 500,000, and because it just triggers different closing costs and it depends if you're financing, not financing. Not gonna go into all the closing costs, that's gonna be a totally different video. We may have actually done a closing cost video, but this is the best way to do it, is you have, what is your debt per month? What is your debt load per month? So that includes the maintenance or the common charges and taxes on the home. It includes the mortgage if you have one, and then it includes all of the installment debt that you pay per month. I already went over that in debt to income ratio video, but these are some of the debt loads that you have per month. And I'm not talking about revolving debt. Revolving debt means that you raise your credit card amount, you pay it off each month. You raise it and then you pay it off. I'm talking about you own a boat or a house or land or payables or alimony or child support and you pay that out every single month. And it's, it's well, sometimes it fluctuates, but a lot of the time it's, it's a set amount. So you pay that out every single month and you add all of the debt that you spend per month. So say it's $1,000, obviously it's gonna be way more than that, maybe it's $10,000. But you take the amount of debt that you spend per month, you multiply that through 24 months and that's how much money you should have. So in other words, if it's, say $10,000 is your debt load, they wanna see at least $240,000 post closing, so after you close. So in other words, yes, you're gonna have closing costs. They don't really factor that in unless it's a really challenging co-op. So in other words, if they put the, if you put down 20%, you will have to have in the bank 24 months of installment debt payments, and it cannot be in the form of annuities that or, or stock that has never been vested or retirement funds. They wanna see this in cash stocks and bonds that you could easily put it on a market and, and actually sell. Or obviously the, the best way is have it in other assets. You know, the, here are some assets that are not included, okay? So in other words, retirement fund. They don't typically, I doubt they'll ever have that in retirement funds because there's taxes. If you, tax penalties, if you move that and you actually vest that out and take that in a cash sum, so 401k, Kio, personal property furniture does not count. Automobiles do not count. Real estate owned do not count. All these things, investment in, in your own business, do not count for the amount of cash that you have as, a, after you close. So those are assets. A lot of them are, fall under the asset category. Yes, obviously owning 401k, yes, it's an asset. Some people think that a car, automobiles, boats, houses are also assets. Yes, they all fit in the asset category. Where the actual co-op looks for your post-closing liquidity, liquidity is the key word. Something you could put on the market tomorrow, sell it, and get money for it. You can't, yes, you could put your home on the market, but there's a closing period. Plus you might put it overvalued or you might be underwater or how much money are you actually gonna get back that back from that after you close. Maybe you, you took a line of credit against your home, borrowed against your home. So they only really care about cash and banks, money market funds, bonds and stocks that you have invested 
and that's it. There's, there's sometimes they look at it if there's a profit sharing, if there's pension plans, things like that, that you receive every single month, but this is something that you could draw down immediately. This is the most important thing when it comes to someone that makes a high, high amount of money, but don't have a lot of money in the in the bank so in other words the best way to get around this is get a gift obviously if the the board allows it you want to get a gift because we've had a lot of people that make plenty of money and their debt to income ratio is perfect so in other words the amount of debt that they they incur and the amount of income that they make it's a good percentage that's fine but when they close and they put down the 20 percent and they have the closing costs there's no money left over and why do they care about that they care about it because in case you lose your job you're gonna have to draw down on this leak on these liquid assets that you have money market stocks bonds cash savings and obviously checking accounts you know those are that's the bundle of money that you're gonna have to draw down so if it's a gift obviously the, the co-op has to allow gifting and they'll include that they'll be fine it'll be a gift letter sometimes people do guarantors some people do co-purchasing sometimes parents buying for kids kids buying for parents in other words they're they're trying to make you the applicant in a co-op as successful and as as good as possible in their eyes. This is a this is a great shareholder. This is going to be a great addition to the community. They make a high salary and they have post closing liquidity of 24 months. Sometimes it's 18 months. Sometimes it's 12 months. The harder the co op to get into. Sometimes they actually have the purchase price times two liquid in the bank account. I there's a there's a Fifth Avenue co op where it's 50 percent down and you need to have the purchase price one and a half times the purchase price liquid liquid not in investments not in a boat or a house or anywhere that they can't draw it down immediately they need to have it liquid so my my candidate was, or my client was a great candidate for the board but the problem was that our reference letters which is a totally different portion our reference letters would not have been good enough because they were not political figures so you know it would have been high status people at, at banks and at hospitals but they were looking at the reference letters not good enough so there's three portions we'll just go over really quick when you're going into a co-op how much money do you make how much money do you have leaving your account every single month that is known as debt to income ratio you want to have that at 25 percent so one fourth only one fourth is leaving your and that's not what we're talking about right now in this video but one fourth of your money leaving your account has to go to or three fourths has to be saved one fourth goes to your housing other needs other debt services then credit that's very important because that that do they have a bankruptcy? Do they, do they foreclose on a property? Do they have any collections? How, mu how much money are they paying every single month? So credit is very important. I've talked about that in the past. This video is about how much money you have left over once you close. It's vital you talk to a real estate agent. It is vital because you don't want to get, especially now, a lot of co-ops, they feel very special and entitled that they are only going to get the best candidates, even if they're nowhere near Fifth Avenue, even if they are 20% down, even if it's a walk up with eight units, they just, they want to feel special. And God bless them because if anything happens, the shareholders in that building have to take over that person's maintenance and potentially other debts. In other words, if something happens, the other shareholders say it's a nine unit building. I'm selling a place in a nine unit, it's a nine unit walk up and the board actually came to us and they said, well, actually they need a gift. So we had to get a gift. So the money came over from overseas. Obviously it got taxed. It's going to be used to bolster their post-closing liquidity. And that's something that's very important. Uh, I had another client that needs more post-closing liquidity. So we have to actually sell their asset, which is their home. They have to go into temporary housing, use the proceeds of the home they sold and buy a new property. They couldn't roll it in because it's a primary residence. It's not, a, there's no 1031 exchange going on. Highly recommend that you get this actually bolstered before your account, obviously propped up before you start looking because gifting, it takes a while sometimes. They actually not only need to sell, whoever's gifting you the money they have to go through maybe clearance if it's international money so highly recommend post-closing liquidity which we're talking about right now debt to income ratio and credit those are the three areas if you guys have any questions highly recommend you start reaching out to your real estate agent or us 646-274-1180 646-274-1180 and if you go on the website we have a calculator we also have the Rebney financial form very important and then we also have the video linking to our other posts which are about debt to income ratio 
and credits, all right, credit scores. Those are the three areas, obviously, yes, there's other areas that they look for, like reference letters and everything else, but those are the three major ones. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.